What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. For those of you who are new to the channel, I review and test PC cases, CPU coolers, PC case fans, and video cards. In this video, I'll be showing you my teardown of the Gigabyte RX 6650 XT Eagle. Plus, I will be redoing the temperature testing to see how good the stock thermal paste and stock thermal pads are. And finally, I'll be tuning the card to get the best performance possible while keeping temperatures in check. I will be showing both temperature charts and some game charts to show you what's actually happening. Now, if you did miss or want to see my full review of this card, there will be a link up there as well as a link down in the description. Otherwise, on to the teardown. Okay, so this is the teardown of the Gigabyte RX 6650 XT Eagle. Sadly to say, this is my second time doing this because the camera was horribly out of focus last time I did this. So all that was completely worthless. So I'm gonna start off by just saying, if you're gonna be taking apart a video card, you should have some sort of mat to kind of protect stuff. This mat's not the greatest mat, but it is at least something. So now for the actual teardown, I'm going to start off by removing the four spring retention screws here. And Gigabyte did do an okay job here. It doesn't say warranty void if removed. It just says Gigabyte on these, on that little sticker there anyways. So then there's two more screws here in the center and then there's two screws at the very end. Now this does not take off the back plate. There's two, four more screws on the other side that have to come out before you can remove the back plate. And these two screws and these two screws are different. Same head size, but different screw. Because one's screwing into metal and one's screwing into plastic. Okay, I'm gonna flip this around and wiggle. There we go. Come on up. Okay. Now this fan header gave me a pretty decent issue last time. Are you gonna give me an issue again? Oh, nope, got it fairly easily there. Good, okay. Oop, that was great. Last time when I took this off, the uh, thermal pads for the memory got horribly thrashed, so I ended up replacing them. The VRM compressor here, hitting the, the mosses and the caps. The screws are over here. So you got one screw, two screw, three screw, four screw. Okay, and this should come off pretty easily. So there are thermal pads on the back plate. Now this back plate is plastic, so I'm not sure how much it's really doing, but they're trying to use it for something at least. Uh, it is like if this was metal, it would be doing a lot more, but obviously plastic, the thermal conductivity of plastic is not the same as aluminum. Yes, they're trying to do something, but how much is plastic doing? I really am not sure. Let's get a little bit more to wipe this stuff down. I'm not making a giant mess here. Okay, so let's remove the cooler and then try remeasuring because You 
should just lift out. There we go. So that's the heatsink. That is a very, very basic heatsink. Uh, so let's. Two hundred and seventy six, two hundred and seventy five, something in around there. So that's really not a very large heatsink for a GPU. I suppose it does kind of go towards of how efficient the sixty six fifty is. Okay, let's try taking a better measurement here. So yeah, six mil, they're actually coming up to be 6.17, or that one is anyways. And that one's, yeah, six mil. So yeah, three six mil heat pipes. Uh, they are direct contact on the die. The, these little sets of notches are indicating where the memory is. So this set of memory does get the heat pipes to do something for the memory. This one is just being set up by the, or cooled down by the actual aluminum plate. And that's, this is aluminum, like, yeah, that is aluminum, which is good to see. Aluminum is much better than stainless steel. So this is all aluminum, which is nice, actually. Let's take a look at the fans. So they are daisy chained into one header. So the center fan does spin the other way, which is Gigabyte's uh, little wind force, whatever, whatever. Let's take out one of these fans and take a look at it. And there you go. around so we can actually look at it. I'll try to blow that up so you can actually properly see it. It's an Aspect Fan model GA81S2U. It's rated for 0.38 amps, 12 volt, yada yada. Pretty standard. that back in so I don't lose these screws. So I guess then the back plate, let's just move out of the way here. It's plastic, really nothing special about it. I'm really not sure, like the back of this does get very hot. So these are transferring the heat into this. Now, if you have some fans blowing some heat or some blowing some air over the back plate here, it will help, but not that much, I'm quite sure. Uh, so this is a 1.5 millimeter pad and this is a 2.5 millimeter pad. And then coming back around to the PCB here. I just wanna clean this up a little better. 
So just some very basic information here. Uh, I'm sorry for the shit quality here, but that's the best my camera could do from where it was at. So the MOSFETs and capacitors both have a one millimeter thermal pad that was on top of them. And from the looks of this, it does look like this is an eight phase design with the memory controller being to the top of the board. There are four two gig Samsung memory modules. The memory did have a 0.5 millimeter thermal pad on them before I destroyed them. Okay, that was the teardown of the Gigabyte RX 6650 XT Eagle. Now, just a quick reminder of my test system. I'll be starting with the temperature charts. I ran these tests at, with the fans at 40 dBA, which had the fans running at around 2950 RPM. So after the teardown, the edge and hotspot temperatures are within margin of error of what they were originally. So the thermal paste that Gigabyte used is good. It actually matches the MX5 that I replaced it with, which is nice to see. But the memory temperatures went up to 72.5 C, and that's because I had to use my shit thermal pads because my good thermal pads, or the 0.5 millimeter good thermal pads that I have, I just don't have enough. So yeah, I've already ordered more and I will have to then switch it out once I get that. But using good thermal pads will obviously help bring down this temperature, which then indicates that Gigabyte is actually using pretty good thermal pads and some pretty good thermal paste. So all in all, there is really no reason to actually take off the heatsink assuming that there's nothing specifically wrong with the card. Moving on to overclocking or tuning the card, I was able to get the clock speed of the Eagle up 68 megahertz to 2550 megahertz in my testing, as well as boosting the memory speed by 9%, so from 2155 to 2370. This did bring the power usage up to 156 watts, which had the average edge temperature go up to 68 Celsius, the average memory temperature go up to 79 Celsius. And again, that is with the shit pads. And the hotspot temperature went up to 87.5 Celsius. Now, what did all that extra heat and power give us when it comes to gaming performance? Something, but not really all too much. In the limited game testing I did, there was a 5.8% boost to the average FPS at 1440p and only a 2.4% boost to the average FPS at 1080. I did only retest four games here, but I do feel that that 6% boost will be pretty typical across all games. Now, I guess that is all I have for this one. So if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching and you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. There's also the HFG Discord server. It is completely free to join. All you have to do is agree to the server rules and you then get to see all of my charts. A link is down in the description. There is also Patreon if you would like to support the channel directly. Again, a link is in the description. You may want to check out these videos here. They should be along the same lines of what you just watched. And as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.